Test, test.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our June meeting. I walk onto the uh, campus today and I'm thinking, well, the students are off. The campus is going to be quieter. Well, what do you know? We actually have a line outside the women's bathroom on the second floor. <laughs> so, but it's the good noisiness. So it's all, I think uh, all the way through from now until the beginning of fall, we're going to see the students' orientations. We have like eight or nine sessions. So it'll be a very exciting time. So even though the school is out, students, uh, you know, current students are left for, uh, you know, for home, for whatever, uh, we still have plenty of excitements on campus. Besides the new students orientation, this Saturday, I think many of us here are going to attend the uh, summer commencement. Um, it's always a heartwarming time to see our soon-to-be newest alum walk through the stage to accept their diplomas. So very looking forward to that. Um, Secretary Schumann, do we have a quorum for today's meeting? Uh, Chair Chen Zhang, we do have a quorum. We have Trustee Penn uh, attending virtually, and we also have proxy votes for the action items from Trustee Johnston, who is out of country right now. Thank you, thank you. And is the live streaming functioning properly? Getting a thumbs up from Jacob, it is. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to call on the board for a motion to accept today's agenda, please. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And are there any comments from our uh, board regarding the minutes from our previous uh, meetings? Madam Chair, I'll move the approval of the minutes. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So that would be for approved the minutes from our meeting on April 21st and May 19th. Um, again, thank you all for joining. Now the microphone is working. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. But we are smaller and I speak loud enough so I know you can hear me. Uh, again, thank you all for joining us this morning, either in person or virtually. And um, as we begin, I would like to uh, extend a warm welcome to our new uh, group of uh, shared governance leaders. Um, the Faculty Senate, WSA and the GSA all have new, uh, new leadership for the board and they will be addressing us shortly. So we are looking forward to working with you. Um, we have a full agenda, a very full agenda ahead of us with key fiduciary decisions for the upcoming academic year on tuition, housing rates, and our operating budget, which includes compensation. And like our students on Saturday, several faculty members are facing a key rite of passage in their academic careers, as today the board considers tenure and promotion recommendations. Uh, in a presentation, interim provost Chetum will be introducing those who will receive the new professional distinctions. So congratulations to them. And additionally, we'll be hearing about another cause of celebration, the 50th anniversary of Title IX. At this time, I would like to ask President Montgomery to share his remarks with the board and those in attendance. Thank you, Chair Chen Zhang. Um, great to have and see everybody here today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, as, as, as was mentioned, we have a number of uh, action items today, so I will keep my remarks brief. Um, but first, let me uh, take a, a moment to join you in applauding uh, our newest uh, graduates. Uh, that's uh, They're going to reach their signature moment on Saturday. I think we'll have 1,100 uh, graduates walking across the stage and being able to confer them degree is always one of the highlights. And so uh, I wanted to, to note that and uh, to tell these Broncos how incredibly proud we are. Uh, of, of what they've done. Uh, they've proven themselves again and again that they possess great grit and determination to achieve their successes and to reach their goals, uh, to find their own particular purpose uh, and to begin the journey of to rich careers and, and hopefully great full lives. Uh, so uh, as we collectively move to the future, I hope uh, the challenges of the past two years will help us all develop a deeper sense of uh, compassion for others and reinforce our stores of resilience and bolster our resolve to push forward and fulfill our mission so that all may learn. Uh, again, congratulations to the graduates. We can't see, wait to see what they do next. 
Speaking of full careers, uh, I wanted to take a moment to recognize four individuals who are retiring from the campus this month. First, our esteemed general counsel, uh, Kara Craig, uh, will be uh, returning to private practice to serve clients in the greater community. But for the past 22 years, uh, it's been the university who's benefited from Carrick's deep knowledge uh, of the law, an incredibly fair-minded uh, approach and belief in the values of higher education and collegial nature. I wanna thank you, Carrick, for the many years of service that you've given. I'd also like to recognize Pete Strauss, uh, who's retiring as Associate Vice President for Facilities Management after 43 years at the university. Pete himself is an institution at this institution. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you, Pete, for choosing to build your professional career around keeping the university's physical plant in tip-top shape uh, from unseen uh, and crucial systems like HVAC to the very visible maintenance and planning of our buildings and the beauty of our grounds. Your relentless positive attitude and approach, uh, your innovation and know-how can-do approach uh, for the campus uh, has invaluably enriched our lives. So thank you very much for that. And then I'd also like to recognize two people from athletics who are retiring, uh, Jeff Stone and Robin Hook. Uh, they're retiring after many, many years of dedicated service. Uh, Jeff Stone, uh, his dedication to our student athletes has been instrumental in uh, driving the fact that our student athletes year after year continue to perform at one of the top academic rates for any school in the MAC. Uh, this year, I believe we had 70 student athletes with a 4.0 grade point average uh, and over a couple hundred uh, with three fives and above. And so that's a real legacy for Jeff uh, that he leaves behind. And for Robin, who's been known as the voice of Bronco Athletics for all these years, uh, he's going to be stepping down from his, uh, his role uh, in athletics as an associate athletic director, but will continue to serve as the, the voice uh, of, of Bronco football and, and as well as men and women basketball and hockey. So we can continue to enjoy that, but they both deserve uh, our appreciation for our great careers at the university. So we want to thank these retiree, these and other retirees for their great contributions uh, for making our campus better and for the many, many years of dedicated service. Uh, while these uh, individuals are concluding long careers, uh, we are also having faculty who are reaching an important milestone today uh, as the board considers their promotion and their tenure decisions. Those are incredibly major accomplishments and milestones in the faculty member's career. Uh, and I want to thank them uh, as a group for uh, their incredible de dedication, uh, their success in both their research and the, the knowledge, uh, as well as uh, their teaching and dedication to our students. So uh, we'll have a, a chance to uh, celebrate them more uh, in a reception uh, after this ceremony. Uh, but again, I would just want to acknowledge uh, these faculty members for their incredible uh, contributions to the university. Yeah. And lastly, but not leastly, it's an anniversary. Uh, one year ago this month, uh, we uh, got to announce the historic $550 million Empowering Futures gift. Uh, and so as we continue to celebrate it, we're now moving into the actual implementation uh, of the gift. And, and this year, obviously, we have the Bronco Promise uh, scholarships, as well as housing and dining scholarships. Uh, that are going to be available for our incoming classes. Uh, we'll have graduation scholarships to help students continue uh, through to completion, uh, as well as we'll begin in the fall uh, putting in place a network of services, advancing our whole person approach to higher education. It will include the opportunity for paid internships, wellness resources, personal navigators, all services dedicated to promoting student success. Um, this uh, array of support will contribute to our uh, well to our collective efforts to make sure the Broncos are supported from the moment uh, their education begins all the way through graduation and through their meaningful careers. With that, I'll turn it back to you, Chair Jordan Lennon. Thank you, President. And of the four people uh, that are retiring, I work with two of them very closely. Uh, I would miss Carrick. I said, let's call Carrick. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's called Carrick. So I need to change that, change that. We'll get some time to get used to. Anna Pete, thanks for taking on my first day as a trustee to uh, tour the campus. And uh, I graduated from Western in 1991. So uh, it was thanks to your tour, I see what the changes have been made to the campus in all the corners. I have not been to in many years. So thank you, Bill. All those people who retired would be great learners. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, uh, welcome the representatives from our shared governance partners and uh, those organizations represents the uh, organization that uh, we work with very closely to guide our university forward. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Chen Zhang, members of the board, President Montgomery, colleagues and guests. On behalf of the Western Michigan University Faculty Senate, thank you for this opportunity to address the board and update you on our activities. On May 12th, the 2022 to 2024 Faculty Senate Executive Board was seated. The Executive Board includes Vice President Bill Rance, three returning directors, Decker Haynes, Kieran Fogarty, and Lisa Giacano Cook, and five new directors, Anthony DeFolio, John Jellies, Kyle Jensen, Brett Wagner, and Z Vidich. One of the Senate's core missions is to consider critical academic issues and provide recommendations to the administration through memorandums of action or MOAs. MOA 1903 recommended changes to the undergraduate and graduate catalogs and the student code of conduct for academic integrity process and Memorandum of Action 2201, Revision of Graduation Requirements for a Specialist Degree to include a capstone option, have been approved by the WMU administration. Memorandum of Action 1910, Revision of the Intellectual Property Policy was recommended for approval by the Faculty Senate in May and has been forwarded to the WMU administration for consideration. The work of the Faculty Senate is primarily conducted through our six councils and 11 committees. These councils and committees are comprised of over 200 faculty and staff each year. Today, I would like to update you on the work of two committees, the WMU Essential Studies Executive Advisory Committee and the WMU Essential Studies Course Review and Approval Committee. These two, two committees work tirelessly on behalf of the WMU Essential Studies program. I would also like to acknowledge Dr. Jonathan Bush as the new WMU Essential Studies Faculty Director. For those of you who are not familiar with this program, I would like to spend a few minutes on its history. WMU Essential Studies was launched in the fall of 2020. The program's design and implementation took over 10 years. As a campus community, we've had come a long way since we started to rethink, redo, and implement WMU Essential Studies. A significant revision to this liberal arts core at WMU had not been addressed for over 30 years. And it was essentially a list of courses that lacked an assessment plan. And what we really needed was a comprehensive program with an effective assessment mechanism. Not having this was part of a deficit that was, that was given to us by the 2010 Higher Learning Commission. In contrast, the Higher Learning Commission in 2020 highlighted the success of WMU Essential Studies, specifically the many people involved in its development and the program's assessment system which is built upon a continuous improvement model. Throughout this initiative, there was only one MOA that was not passed upon an initial vote of the full faculty senate. And this MOA was to name the program. The name that failed was Western Essential Studies. The name we now have is WMU Essential Studies. Because of this failure, there are many of us that were part of this hiccup that are now very passionate that we say WMU Essential Studies. My faculty Senate colleague, Dr. Decker Haynes, would like to initiate a fine paid to the Senate for all of those who utter Western Essential Studies and not WMU Essential Studies. From 2011 to 2016 was the program's exploration phase. This included brown bag lunches, a campus-wide survey, student focus groups, and a two-day visit from a national expert. The result of this work was a self-study report with five specific recommendations that became the framework of our program. From 2016 to 2020, we built the program. 
This included a design committee, a logistics committee, and then finally, our permanent committee structure, WMU Essential Studies Executive Advisory Committee, and the WMU Essential Studies Course Review and Approval Committee. It also included the passage of multiple MOAs and the creation of many processes, procedures, and subsequent forms. The MOAs include MOA 1606, General Education Reform, MOA 1701, Naming of the Revised General Education Curriculum, MOA 1705, Revision of the WMU General Education Curriculum, MOA 1801, WMU Essential Studies Learning Outcomes, MOA 1802, WMU Essential Studies Course Approval Requirements, MOA 1803, WMU Essential Studies Student Requirements, and MOA 2004, WMU Essential Studies Data Governance. Currently, the WMU Essential Studies program is comprised of 377 courses across three levels and 12 categories. While the goal is to have 100% of all instructors submit student learning outcome assessment data, we are currently at approximately 85%. And we think that's really good for two years into our program because we are asking instructors to collect data that they've never had to collect before. A unique aspect of the program is the requirement that students enroll in a course that has a diversity and inclusion student learning outcome and a planetary sustainability student learning outcome. Approximately 20% of the courses in the program have a diversity and inclusion student learning outcome, and 7% of the courses include a plan planetary sustainability student learning outcome. We will be working to increase both of these. From the spring of 2021 to the end of fall 2021, so the calendar year of 2021, there have been a total of 76,767 enrollments that students in seats within the program. Additionally, we have just completed the first year of our four year cyclical review process. The first three years of the review cycle is the cyclic course review, which proposes to provide insight into the, into the development and execution of the WMU Essential Studies program with a specific focus on ensuring courses meet the intent of the category they have selected, have syllabi that clearly indicate and communicate the nature of the course as it relates to WMU Essential Studies, and that the course has an effective assessment plan. This is not a curricular process, but where there are process focused on continuous improvement. The cyclic review process is completed by the WMU Essential Studies Course Review and Approval Committee with the intent of providing feedback to instructors and providing summary findings of overall course compliance and quality to the WMU Essential Studies Executive Advisory Committee. The final year of the review cycle will be the complete program review. And this is where the WMU Executive Advisory Committee will conduct an assessment of the entire program as a whole based partially on the input from the first three years of the course review. As you've just heard, this has been a huge undertaking and we're now in full swing. Thank you to all of those who participated in this process and who currently serve on these two very important committees. We are very proud of this work and we look forward to continuing to see the benefits as more students complete their studies under, the new general, under our new general education program, WMU Essential Studies. Thank you, Chair Chen Zhang, for allowing me to address the board. I'm now available to answer any questions. Any questions? No questions, but is it okay to say less than, you know, to make sure, you know, I, I'm gonna go <laughs> just with an acronym, you know? No? <laughs> you get a fine. I know, sorry, okay, you, I have my- You answer. will be fine. Okay, yeah, let's yeah, make it sure. Thank you, thank you for your report. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I. I I really remember back in about three, three, about four years ago, I sat down uh, during one of my meetings with then the president, Rick Lashan, and I talked about the WMU essential program. At that time, I don't think the name was quite there yet. So I keep on referring it to like core curricula because, you know, it was in my mind borrowed from another entity. But I am. So thank you so much for sharing your work on this because I am a firm believer of the value of the humanity education to our students. Because I think what we will find out is down the road, the information, the knowledge is not going to be an issue. People can Google it, they can get it. The challenge for our students is not going to be, they don't have enough information 
is they have too much. How they can process it with their own critical thinking skills is going to be the key for their success. And this is where the value of the humanity education comes into play. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for your mm -hmm. work on this. And next, we're going to welcome WSA President Sen Ki Chen Kitsa. Yeah, my, my husband's last name is C-H-E-N-G, so I know how to pronounce that one. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to start off with some greetings first. Salam sejahtera, tatia hao, daika ho, and a very good morning to Chair Jin Zhang, members of the board, and everyone in attendance. It's an honor and privilege to be given the opportunity to represent the student body today. And as the first international student to serve this, in this position, I took the liberty to start my greetings in my country's national language and my mother's tongue as tribute. After all, it took a century for this to happen since the establishment of WSA. Denoting how far we've come in regards to diversity includes civity and perseverance. To that, I would like to take this opportunity to wish happy Juneteenth, to appreciate and celebrate the promotion of faculty members and congratulate students who will be graduating this Saturday. And talking about graduation, it feels a little bit weird because I'll be graduating this December and pursuing my accelerated master's program in political science next year. Anyways, to keep things brief, I'll be providing some updates on what the Western Student Association has been working on throughout this summer and what our strategic goals are. As WSA will be entering its 101st year, we've, been, we've made major changes to the organization. I thank my predecessor, past president Alexis Morris, for leadership that helped mold WSA to be a more in inclusive, accessible, and effective organization. The major changes include allowing the president and vice president to serve a more external facing role, uniting the Senate and House of Representatives as the Assembly, and far more importantly, all Western student as students are WSA non voting members. In other words, any Western student can come forward to propose legislation participate in discussion, and contribute in our activities. Another major overhaul we have done is revamping, revamping our logo, which I would like to thank Marcom uh, for guiding and facilitating this process. Our new logo now includes a tree, which symbolizes not only growth in general, but the idea that when seeds, like students, are nurtured, will flourish. The shape reflects a traditional academic banner, while the use of a diamond creates an arrow pointing ahead towards the future. We have also changed our primary colors from blue and white to brown and gold, further resembling our commitment to serve this institution and our Broncos. Indeed, there's a lot of changes, but my team are embracing it with enthusiasm and excitement. In a short span of two months, we have filled all 15 cabinet level positions with competent undergrad and grad students from diverse backgrounds. We've met at least 12 WMU departments and offices and eight student organizations to understand their challenges and work on future collaborations. We have also developed a big long program with student assessment fee staff agencies to engage with student leaders along with a student leadership summit that will serve as a resource platform for RSO's leaders. We, are, we have also been working with the Kalamazoo City Council on a few projects, including but not limit, limited to a student walkability audit, a student discount directory, internship and volunteering opportunities at downtown as well. This is definitely just the start as my team and I will be running at full steam ahead starting next month. As we look to read the next 100 years, we're pivoting our organization to focus on sustainability. We'll be emphasizing a greater collaboration and coordination effort across departmental and organizational boundaries that addresses students' concerns more efficiently and effectively. As we're exiting the pandemic into a new normal, there's a lot of work to do. There are challenges and obstacles that frustrate us and turns us cynical. However, I remain hopeful and devoted to turning these challenges into lessons that will strengthen our team work across campus. Thank you and onward for the brown and gold and open to any questions as well. Thank you. Well, you see all the new students on campus. Yes. So there's your work. As always said, we can say, we adults can say a thousand times, nobody listens to us, they blow us off. You, your words count to the new students. So thank you for your work.
And next, we're going to uh, uh, to welcome the vice president from the GSA, Kathy Hernandez. Good morning, Chair Cheng Sang, <laughs> members of the board, President Montgomery, and the rest of the Western family and friends. Uh, we continue to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be part of this shared governance in serving our university. I'm going to read off of uh, President's, uh, GSA President Mohammed Asif. He's not able to join today, but I'm going to read off of his letter. Here are some quick updates from the GSA. We are still in the process of electing the remaining positions for our e-board. Rather than just filling spots, we are focusing on candidates who would be best fit the role and hold a proactive attitude. Kathy and I share in moving things forward. Interviews are lined up for summer two, starting early July, with who we believe are great candidates to serve at the GSA. We spent summer one exploring the different systems and in around the university in our quest to understand the nature of the interactions that different positions and titles have with each other's in affect the overall morale of the university. We have also focused our efforts on building relationships with different departments, ethnic groups, and international organizations to better gauge the needs of graduate students as we continue to plan GSA's directions for the following academic year. The goal of these interactions is the formulation of a strategic plan within GSA to better serve our community, including graduate students at the university as a whole. We are continuing to work with Dr. Anderson in pushing the mental health conversation forward. There is much to be done, but it is important to note that we are moving in the right direction. The same could be said about improving the general morale where President Montgomery has been of great help in assisting us play an active role. Another important task in our list is the prom promotion of DEI as a concept, not just for students within the US, but to expand upon what DEI means for international graduate students as there is a misconception around it at the moment. As I write this to address the board from the conference at MIT, I am happy to share that the team at MIT have offered their tools, strategies, and insight into pushing similar goals forward. It has been an interesting learning experience to see approaches taken by universities outside of ours. I would like to take this opportunity in thanking our, our former advisor, Kate Bates, for her service to the GSA. As she moves on into a different path in an industry setting, she has played a momentous role in everything positive that GSA has offered throughout the years. So thank you, Kate, we will miss you a lot. Overall, to wrap up, GSA is on track to developing our strategies for the upcoming year to bring forth a stronger impact on the positive well-being of our graduate population. We are committed to the goals of understanding problems and finding solutions in a collaborative effort. Thank you, sincerely, Asif and Kathy. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. I think it's uh, it's very exciting to hear your collaboration with uh, uh, the other universities, because I think across the board from all the universities, uh, we face some similar issues and challenges. And I think it's, it's uh, I'm enlightened to hear your work on the DEI among the graduate students, I think often we have the we have the misconception. We think everyone understands the DEI from the same concept. When as you pointed, it's not, especially if you come from the international background. So we greatly appreciate your work on this. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much. So next with Great excitement. We are going to hear the uh, presentation on WMU's investment in the future, academic tenure, and the promotion. Thank you very much, Chair Junzang. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, I have the privilege of recommending 33 faculty members for tenure, 20 faculty members for promotion from associate to full professor, 
20 faculty members for promotion from assistant to associate professor, four faculty members for promotion from faculty specialist two to master faculty specialist, and three faculty members for promotion from faculty specialist one to two, effective for the 2022-23 academic year. If you are one of these faculty members and are in attendance today, please stand as able so we're able to recognize your achievements. We're gonna assume they're all virtual, so we're going to clap. <laughs> Also, please know that even though my role here is interim, I've been guaranteed that your tenure and or your promotion is not. So <laughs> we're good on that. The achievement of tenure and promotion is one of the most significant accomplishments in the career of a faculty member. The process is rigorous and the review is comprehensive. Each faculty member prepares a portfolio, which includes evidence of accomplishments in the area of professional competence, professional recognition, and professional service for traditionally ranked, ranked faculty members and professional competence and professional service for faculty specialists. Just as an example, here, here is an example of one of these oh my goodness, um, portfolios. And I took the name off it so you don't. Um, and sometimes we get anywhere from one to four of these for one individual. So that gives you an idea of the, of the breadth of work that our, our faculty members do. There was laughter written in here. But <laughs> the portfolios are reviewed at the levels of the department committee, the department chair, the college committee in the cases of promotion, the dean and the provost. We are so proud of their accomplishments and their service to our students, their respective professions, our university and our community. So with that, to continue a practice that we started in 2020 due to the pandemic, we have a slideshow that recognizes each individual receiving tenure and or promotion today. Please hold any applause until we announce all the individuals. I'll be reading each slide and I ask for forgiveness ahead of time if I do mispronounce any names. So with that, Jacob and I are gonna try to do this in sync and we will start. Mm -hmm. So Ashley Atkins, Department of Philosophy, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. There's a little delay. Um, Bradley Bazine, Department of Electrical and Computer Sciences, promoted to professor. Teresa Biezka, Center for the English Language and Culture for International Students, promoted to master faculty specialist. Amy Baco, University Libraries, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. Sunday Boniface, Department of Accountancy, granted tenure. Martha Council Vargas, School of Music, promoted to professor. Scott Cowley, Department of Marketing, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. Amy Damashek, Department of Psychology, excuse me, promoted to professor. Alessandra Donna Dos Santos, Department of Physical Therapy, granted tenure. Joanne DeWitt, WMU Bronson School of Nursing, granted tenure and promoted to master faculty specialist. Jeremy Duncan, Department of Biological Sciences, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. Edward Eckel, University Libraries, promoted to professor. Walortia and Katavin, Department of Finance and Commercial Law, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. Claudia Vajardo Hansford, Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, promoted to professor. Diane Foskey, Center for English Language and Culture for International Students, granted tenure and promoted to master faculty specialist. Pablo Gomez, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, granted tenure. Lori Gray, School of Interdisciplinary Health Programs, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. Ramakrishna Guda, Department of Chemistry, promoted to professor. Sally Haddon, Department of Chemistry, promoted to professor. Monique Haley, Department of Dance, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. Jennifer Harrison, School of Social Work, promoted to professor. 
Vidyat Hazarika, Department of Business Information Systems, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. Kevin High, Department of Aviation Sciences, promoted to professor. Donald Hoover, Department of Physical Therapy, granted tenure. Gum Chan Wang, Department of Human Performance and Health Education, granted tenure and promoted to associate professor. Scott Ireland, Department of Theater, promoted to professor. Miriam Konate, Institute for Intercultural and Anthropological Studies, promoted to professor. Charles Kurt, Department of Philosophy, promoted to professor. Daryl Lawson, Department of Physical Therapy, granted tenure. Ramona Lewis, Department of Educational Leadership, Research and Technology, promoted to Master Faculty Specialist. Jeffrey Lindenberg, Department of Aviation Sciences, granted tenure. Rob Layerla, Department of Physician Assistant, granted tenure. Colin McCreary, Department of Computer Science, granted tenure and promoted to Faculty Specialist II. Don Mason, Department of Accountancy, granted tenure. Kara Maslink, Department of Occupational Therapy, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Heather McGee, Department of Psychology, promoted to Professor. Shannon McMorrow, School of Interdisciplinary Health Programs, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Richard Meyer, Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Mohamed Driza Musavide, Department of Business Information Systems, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Mary Nielsen, Department of Marketing, promoted to Faculty Specialist II. Natalio Ahano, Department of Spanish, promoted to Professor. Mary O'Kelly, University Libraries, promoted to Professor. Leah Omilian Hodges, School of Communication, promoted to Professor. Kelly Pattison, WMU Bronson School of Nursing, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Carlos Pimentel, Department of World Languages and Literatures, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Vincent Raitano, School of Public Affairs and Administration, <laughs> granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Veronica Rice McCray, Department of Business Information Systems, promoted to Faculty Specialist II. Geraldine Rina, University Libraries, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Diana Sachs, University Library, promoted to Professor. Jagat Saini, Department of Accountancy, promoted to Professor. Rika Saito, Department of World Languages and Literatures, promoted to Professor. Xiaojun Shao, Department of Civil and Construction Engineering, promoted to Professor. Sybil Shatuk, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor from the Institute of the Environment and Sustainability. Marianne Serenga, University Libraries, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Lee Wells, Department of Industrial and Entrepreneurial Engineering and Engineering Management, granted tenure and promoted to Associate Professor. Li Zhang, Department of World Languages and Literatures, granted tenure. Russell Zwanka, Department of Marketing, granted tenure. Thank you, and please join me in a round of applause. Thank you, and a big congratulation to those professors and faculties on achieving this milestone in their career. Um, Secretary Schumann, do we have any public comments regarding action items? Chair Chen Zeng, we do not. Thank you. So we're going to move forward to uh, our action items. And uh, the number one item is a very happy proclamation of the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Title IX, which is going to bring uh, to be brought forward by Mr. Bartholomew, uh, Ms. Crawford, and Ms. Smith.
morning. Good morning. Thank you for letting us come and speak today. The WMU Athletics Diversity Task Force and the Title IX Working Group have been working since last December to find ways to celebrate Title IX through the 2022 calendar year for its 50th anniversary. This wonderful partnership has provided many great ideas that we all kicked off in February. The first thing was a, a mini sport exhibition around a women's basketball game on February 5th. We've recorded and played videos from our female student athletes and coaches on what Title IX means to them and the opportunities that it has provided them. We've hosted a real talk uh, on our, our first panel with former Broncos student athletes and staff with both their focus on gender equity issues in sports and have more planned for later this year. We focused our fundraising efforts to raise money for women's athletics this year through annual giving and our 50-50 raffles. We introduced the Mid-American Conference's new Trailblazer Award, which was won inaugurally by our own Kathy Beauregard. Our upcoming Hall of Fame induction will focus on people who had an impact on women's athletics here at WMU. We are also planning a women's empowerment luncheon to bring prominent women in our community and our female athletes together. I don't have time here today to list all the ways we have and are planning to celebrate Title IX this year, but to say it's of primary importance to us is an understatement. I am truly happy we are celebrating the 50th birthday of Title IX, largely because of the enormous impact this law has had on millions of women and girls. Without it, I wouldn't be here. I get to work every day with our student athletes and coaches who are chasing their dreams. And I do not want anyone to forget how crucial having laws that prevent discrimination are and the benefits of having people of all differences bring to the table. And because it's a birthday, we are hosting a small celebration in the lobby with cupcakes and cookies beginning at noon. So please join us. <laughs> um, thank you for your time and consideration today in, rec re in recognizing this vitally important day. Good morning, everybody. So as, as you can imagine from uh, Kiana's presentation, we are so proud and appreciative of the great work of not only Kiana, but also the diversity task force led by our own student athletes and setting up all this great programming to celebrate this 50th anniversary of Title IX. In addition to the diversity task force, the leadership of not only Kiana, but Dr. Luchara Wallace, our faculty athletic representative who could not be here today because she is leading a youth retreat in Dallas and changing the world as she always does. Uh, Dr. Candy McCorkle uh, and uh, Felicia Crawford. Uh, I will tell you, that is a squad right there. And uh, we are uh, really proud to champion their important efforts. Uh, we're excited to offer the ongoing programming recognizing this landmark year and particularly excited to have them culminate in the re-engagement of our Athletics Hall of Fame Committee and Banquet, which will take place on October 14th, 2022. Uh, in working with our committee since February, we will be presenting the first all-female induction class in the history of our Hall of Fame with members selected but not yet publicly released. As luck would have it, as Kiana mentioned, we identified early on that this board meeting literally fell on the birthday of Title IX, June 23rd. And in athletics, we never let a great opportunity for a celebration pass us by. So as Kiana mentioned, we will have a life-size birthday card in the lobby and cupcakes, and we, we hope to all see you here uh, after the meeting. Uh, we are excited to bring before you a proclamation for endorsement. Uh, this proclamation will be posted publicly on our university website and celebrated as part of our efforts to recognize the 50th anniversary of Title IX. This proclamation was drafted by our faculty athletic rep, Dr. Luchara Wallace, with consultation from our office and endorsement from the leadership of WSA, GSA, the AAUP, and our faculty senate. I will not read the entire proclamation. However, in part, it does acknowledge Western Michigan University's celebration of this landmark legislation, which provided historic and significant protections against sex-based discrimination in education programs that receive federal financial assistance. It proudly states the impact of this legislation on the broad-based participation opportunities received by female athletes at Western Michigan University, which includes 10 female athletic programs of our 16 total, 190 female athletic participation opportunities, and female sports in all programs with scholarships funded to the maximum allowable by NCAA rules that have re resulted in 48 total MAC championships in women's sports. 
The proclamation resolves that the Faculty Senate, American Association of University Professors, Western Student Association and Graduate Student Association at Western Michigan University do hereby proclaim June 23rd, 2022, a celebration of the 50th anniversary of Title IX at Western Michigan University. We hope you'll sign the giant birthday card in the lobby and we appreciate your support of this proclamation. Good afternoon, Chair, Board. My name is Felicia Crawford, the Director of Title IX Compliance for the University, and I work in institutional equity. Title IX consists of just 37 words, but we now know how 37 well-chosen words backed by action can change the nation and the world. Though signed in 1972 and largely applied to athletics and admissions, in 1996, the court started to embrace the legal application of Title IX to sexual harassment. In 2001, we saw broad accountability to colleges and universities for addressing sexual harassment, and in 2011, for responding to sexual violence. Title IX has transformed into a tool to provide justice for survivors and due process rights protections for respondents. As Title IX continues to evolve, WMU remains steadfast to put a shining light on all of the paths to protections, to prevention, and for response. We want to remedy and prevent sexual misconduct on our journey towards equity. In conclusion, I provide full support for the implementation, the adoption, and the acknowledgement of the proclamation. Thank you. But does that mean uh, every day if we have the meeting on that day, we're going to have a cake <laughs> set? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, do we have a motion to support the proclamation? So moved. Support. Is that a roll call? I do. Uh, and in front of me, Chair Chen Zhang, I have uh, Trustee Johnson's uh, proxy report. So, as we get to his name, I will call out uh, what he's provided. Um, so, the vote Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston. Yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinbelt. Yes. Trustee Trevant. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang, motion passes. Thank you and congratulations. And the next is another very exciting item. Uh, interim Provost Cheatham, please provide us the academic tenure and promotion. Thank you, Chair Chen Zhang. It is a recommended tenure and or promotion be approved for the faculty members specified in the board materials for item 11. Thank you. Can I entertain a motion? So moved. Support. Secretary Schumann, can we do the roll call please? Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston. Yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinbelt. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang, motion passes. Thank you and congratulations again. And next, the Vice President Van Clay, please present the uh, Tao Labor. Thank you. And before I do, I'd like to introduce our newly joined academic collective bargaining individual who does not know I'm calling on him and he's giving me a look, but he'll be doing this in the future. Uh, Dave D. Thorne, would you like to stand so they know you've joined us? And he'll be taking it over. So the Teaching Assistance Union, TAO, represents about 450 individuals. They're half-time, full-time appointments with about 69% being full-time. And they are our graduate students, our doctoral students who provide teaching and other lab services for us. This group was first organized in 2006. Negotiations began in March and were completed at the end of May and the TAO organization ratified on June 21st. It's a four-year agreement runs from August 20th, 2022 through August 21, 2026. The rate increases for the compensation year one, 2.5%, year two, 
year two, 2.25, and year three and four, 2%. In addition, current members receive a lump sum amount. That amount's being increased $80 to be $405. Teaching assistants who return for subsequent appointments uh, also receive a lump sum payment, and that will be $100, and uh, currently in the pre-existing contract, $75. In addition, there's better clarification as to hours that can be assigned when it's necessary to substitute one TAU member, one TAU assistant for another class. And in addition, uh, language got clarified that a TAU member will be notified of their duties at least one week before the start of an academic term or their appointment start, whichever comes later. So with that, it's recommended that the Board of Trustees approve the four-year contract with the WMU chapter of the Teaching Assistance Union. I can answer questions. So moved. Support. Yes, uh, Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston. Yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinvelt. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang. Motion passes. Thank Thank you. And so I'm going to put Kurt Graham on the spot. Kurt, can you stand as well? <laughs> Kurt handles our administrative bargaining leads for us and was very instrumental in working with the Police Officer Association to reach this tentative agreement. So thank you, Kurt. So coming before you today is a five-year contract going from July 1, 2022 through June 30th. 2027. Uh, the Police Officer Association, POA, ratified on Monday, June 20th. And I just kind of want to remind people that uh, we actually had a one-year extension with the police, and that was because we were still having COVID, a lot of uncertainty. And at that point, the only item that had been changed and agreed to was a 1% increase for last fiscal year. It was base across the board for officers and a lump sum for the detectives. Uh, what you have before you considers last year's agreement as well as a more comprehensive negotiation of economic and non-economic articles. Uh, there was, there's been quite a bit of activity, um, new contracts with local police agencies. So that came into play as we looked at market. So in year one of the agreement, a 3.25% increase, this is for officers, 3% in year two, 2.5% in year three and four, and a 2% increase in year five. The proposed contract also eliminates the detective wage scale and includes a 3% increase to their compensation differential above other officers. That's more comparable with what you find with police agencies outside of universities. Um, we also continue, and I wanna remind people that the police officers have the same medical health insurance as do non-bargaining and our faculty, AAUP, and continue to pay the same contributions for health insurance. So with that, uh, we're recommending that the Board of Trustees approve the five-year contract with the WMU Police Officers Association, POA. And none of the officers who negotiated could make it. Uh, many of them work night shifts. So um, otherwise, I would have identified and recognized their efforts as well. So moved to adopt the contract. Thank you. Uh, Support. Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston. Yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinvelt. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang, motion passes.
The next three items all relates to the tuition required fees, housing, and a budget. So before we take a vote on this, I would like to take a moment just to share what goes into the thoughts and the decision-making process for those important decisions. Um, but far, first and foremost, our concern is our students. And uh, as trustees, we take our fiduciary oversight responsibilities very seriously. We acknowledge that while we all believe that the college education will provide great rate of return down the road, it is a major investment for the students as well as for their families. Therefore, we strive to maintain the uh, balance, maintaining quality with keeping WMU accessible to our students. And each year, university leadership assesses the institution mission and a strategic direction and analyze how well the university is meeting obligations, including compensating our employees for their work, delivering the high quality learning and the living experience our students and family expect and deserve. Um, so now we will hear again from Vice President Amanda Clay on tuition budget and then we're gonna hear from Vice President Anderson on room boarding and apartment rates for the coming school year. So I wanna thank you for those remarks because it really does set the stage for what we're bringing to you today for tuition and required fee rate increases. Um, we really do look at our students, their families and are very, very focused on remaining a school of access and choice. Tuition and fees are a very important revenue source for the university as well. Um, the general fund budget, which will be a further action item, uh, the tuition fees comprise about 73% of the budget. And if you look at entire revenue for the university, they generate about 53%. What we are recommending today is a 3.85% increase for tuition required fees for resident undergraduate students. And just to kind of put some context as to what that will mean for a student and their family, a newly admitted full-time Michigan resident freshman will pay $13,950 in tuition and required fees to attend WMU for the 22-23 academic year. This is an increase of $516 for the academic year. A comparable rate increase is also being proposed for non-resident undergraduate students, resident and non-resident graduate students, and students enrolled in fully online programs. It should be noted that differential tuition is staying flat. There's no increase being recommended for differential tuition. So being mindful of the financial pressure, pressures to our students, and the proposed increase is lower than the tuition restraint language currently proposed by the governor and the Senate, who were both proposing restraint language of 5% and the House at 4.4%. Uh, the state has not yet passed a budget, so those were kind of the ranges of restraint. And we wanted, again, looking at access with still the need of providing an exemplary education mm -hmm. to not uh, to try to be as conservative as we could in the increase. Also would note that the projected higher education price index, HEPI, is uh, noted at 4.2%. So again, we're trying to trend down below the national trends for cost increase. We take this as a fiduciary responsibility and it's really important to us and to the board to be so thoughtful about the recommended increase. As a reminder, WMU was one of the few Michigan publics that kept tuition flat in fiscal year 21. In the fiscal year 2022, tuition rate increase was 1% one per, one point less than allowed by the state tuition restraint. So again, uh, we're trying to be very mindful of staying below the latitude we have for increases. So it's recommended that effective with the fall 2022 semester, the Board of Trustees approves the schedule of tuition required fee rates, which has been attached. 
Thank you, Vice President Bentley. Uh, it is worth mentioning that we, we understand it's a very big decision. So before um, we bring the, uh, the motion to the board, the board of trustees, as a matter of fact, has spent numerous hours and including held a special sessions. Uh, special meetings just to discuss the items and then look at all the numbers and proposals. So any questions for Vice President Van de Klee on this? Hearing none, can I entertain a motion? So moved. Any support? Support. support. Uh, Secretary Schumann, can I have a roll call, please? Yes. Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston, yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinbelt. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the next item is the general fund budget. Vice uh, President Van again. Thank you. So I know budgets can be dry for the rest of the world, but I really like budgets and get excited about them. And so, you know, the reason why is um, when you're trying to determine how you can deliver on your mission, your strategic values, and for us, it truly really is access and providing a wonderful education for our students. The budget is a really important framework to making sure you have the resources being directed where you want, want to accomplish what you really hope to achieve. So with that, um, it's been stated many a time, we wanna be the school of choice and we want to do everything we can to help our students succeed after they leave us. Today, uh, the budget that's coming forward is a balanced budget. Uh, that's always very important to us. Um, we also view that as one of our primary fiduciary responsibilities. The 2022-23 general fund budget totals approximately $407.3 million. It's actually a decrease from last year's budget, about 1.9% decrease, which translates to about $7.8 million. Revenues declined about $7.8 million. And also, in order to achieve the balanced budget, expenses declined by the same amount. So with that, um, the state has not yet, as I mentioned, passed a higher education budget. And so based on the proposals that have come forward from the governor, the House and Senate, we believe that projecting a 3.25% increase in state appropriations base is a reasonable assumption. Uh, this is the first base increase that we've actually reflected in our budget from the state for many a year. So I wanna point that out. Based on the action just taken, we had the 3.85% increase in tuition required fees. And I've already talked about why that's an important source of revenue for us. The change in budgeted revenues results from the state appropriations, tuition rate changes, and also enrollment changes. The expense side uh, recognizes compensation increases that align, align with the negotiated contracts, as well as a 2.5% increase across the board for non-bargaining employees. In addition, I'd like to note that student financial aid that's need-based has been increased 4.27% which is exceeds the tuition increase. And as mentioned, the Empowering Futures gift has also been very important to bring forward new aid to our students. We were also able to reduce the fringe, fringes, the rate that's assessed for that um, due to changes that have been made in healthcare plan design. We had savings there. And we also had debt that became totally paid off during the year. So debt service was also reduced during the year. And also to help us reach a balanced budget, we were able to use the contingency reserve, which we talked about and had been approved in prior budgets. So one other slight change we made uh, last year's budget, we were able to set up three new strategic initiatives reserves, uh, one under the president, one under the interim provost, and one that's dedicated to deferred maintenance. 
And we've also made a $1 million reduction in those three previously. 10 million has been allocated for those strategic initiatives. It's now 9 million in the proposed budget. So with that, it's recommended the board approve the proposed fiscal year 22-23 general fund budget and provides the necessary university financial resources to meet instructional, programmatic, and operating needs. Happy to answer questions. Thank you, Vice President Van Clay. So that you know, I also very passionate about budget. <laughs> and anything with numbers, I'm very passionate about. Any questions? I've, I've got one. Yeah, and I'll, I'll echo my excitement about budgets, but <laughs> it's mostly because you can see the priorities of our organization. You can see yep. the numbers. So yes. around that, uh, you know, I'm excited to see the the financial aid. Can you tell sort of where that's directed towards, or what you know, initiatives around that? Yeah, Chris, if you want to chime in as well, but it's, it's based solely on need. So they would be looking at the families who have um, family contribution rates that are at a certain level. So it's more of a challenge for the family and the student to provide the funds for coming to education. It's a significant recruiting and retention tool. And also um, just due to social economics is also quite important for diversity, equity and inclusion efforts as well. Chris, did you wanna add anything? Yeah, I think that captures it very well. So what we'll do is for the upcoming year, and we'll do that very soon, is we will look at the, the need-based amounts for, for students who's, who fall or families fall in certain um, estimated family contribution bands. So this will be helpful in us modeling that to provide as much support as possible. And then one other one, you know, again, on the other side of it is the, I see the, 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 the line item on the, the strategic investment, you know, basically the strategic initiative adjustment, and that's sort of targeted towards student retention. Why sort of has that been picked or what was the reasoning behind that or? So as we looked at um, the various options that we had available to us at the 7.8 million, we wanted to balance the recruitment and retention of students and we felt we had addressed that um, both through the new financial aid as well as the empowering future gifts but it's also very important to us to retain our faculty staff employees and as we looked at options and how we could balance the budget we felt it was more important to take that step and um, avoid any budget reductions that might impact faculty and staff. Thank you, that's all I have. Any further questions? Any questions? Hearing none, can I entertain a motion? So moved. Support. Support. Can we do a roll call please? Again, uh, Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston, yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinbelt. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang, motion passes. Thank you. And the next is also a very important item. Uh, Ms. Anderson is going to present us at the room board and apartment rates for the coming year. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I like budgets, but I prefer talking about student experience. So just, just for the record, <laughs> just for the record. Today, I come before you to make a formal request for a room and board as well as apartment rate increase. Before doing so, I would like to share some important information with you regarding our housing and dining operations. For the 2021 academic year, we operated 12 residence halls, two dining facilities, nine cafes, and four apartment-style complexes. During the fall semester 2021, we had 3,682 residents who lived on campus, 80.95% of degree-seeking first-time freshmen chose to live in the residence halls. Apartment complexes operated at 93.5% occupancy. And hot off the press, I'm telling you just today, we are at 4,011 students that have already signed up for housing for this next fall. So we're really excited to see those numbers. We're, we're ready to have everybody come back and we're really pleased with that. But numbers are only part of the story. 
The more important piece of the story is the student experience living on campus. We dedicate significant time and energy in training our student and professional staff so they are equipped to help students build friendships and community, a sense of belonging, so they are able to get the most out of their collegiate experience. We offer an array of living learning communities so students can learn and grow alongside others with simil similar passions and interests. These living learning communities are meant to enhance the connections between academic and co-curricular experiences. We offer programming so students get outside of their rooms and for some their comfort zones to meet students who come from very different backgrounds and places. We work closely with our Department of Public Safety colleagues and staff from all over campus to ensure students have the resources they need to be successful. All of these experiences contribute to a well-rounded student experiences, which is what we strive for our students. We cannot think about the student experience with also without thinking about food. Our dining services team is also focused on the student experience. They provide lots of great nutritious options in a variety of food venues that cater to students' tastes, desires, nutritional needs, including a venue that serves students with specific dietary restrictions and or allergies. They partner with international students to offer cuisine that appeals to them and exposes our domestic students to foods they may never have tried otherwise. WMU is committed to creating spaces where students want to live, eat, and socialize while pursuing their academic and career goals. Ongoing innovations and improvements to residential facilities provide an essential foundation for student success, engagement, and support. In order to provide the kinds of experiences I have just described, we have used an integrated planning and budgeting strategy that has allowed for significant incentives and discounts for students and families, totaling $2.4 million annually, while also enabling collaborative, future-looking administration of housing, dining, and student center operations. With the completion of the new student center, all dining centers and more than 40% of the current housing portfolio will have been constructed after 2011, which is a huge stride for us. But we've been working on this for a while and we're making great strides. Thanks to our colleagues in business and finance, we have appreciated the partnership. Students living on campus benefit from easy access to classes, events, and services. All on-campus housing options include laundry, water, sewer services, trash removal, and enhanced security services. This, request, this year's request for room and board rate increase maintains our competitive advantage compared with our other Michigan public universities. Additionally, the request for apartment rates keeps our rates comparable to offerings in the surrounding community. The recommendation not only continues to support and assist WMU in recruitment and retention and student success efforts, but it also supports responsible fiscal management. In keeping with our desire to provide campus living that is affordable, attainable, and attractive, we are recommending a very low rate increase of 2%. With inflation being at 8.8% for the Midwest as of May, we recognize that this year's request is an investment in our students and in alignment with our commitment to affordability. The recommendation I bring today is for a 2% increase in student room and board rates for the 22-23 academic year effective the fall semester. The annual cost for room and board in a traditional residence hall with a 14 meal plan option will be $10,445, which equates to a $26 per month increase. Housing costs vary according to room amenities and the meal plan students choose. The apartment rate increase I bring today is 3.75% for Stadium Drive and Western View apartments, effective fall semester 2022. This increase keeps us in line with comparable units in the off-campus market. We once again are recommending no increase for our Arcadia Flats. We have not increased rates for those units since they opened. With those recommendations, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, any questions? No, just a comment, Lynn. Um, I'd like to thank Diane and the team for going back. I mean, we had several strategy meetings talking about room and board and the impact of, of students and what everybody is facing in terms of, 
you know, cost to attend the university. So I really appreciate that you guys went back and, and you know, sharpened the pencils and, and figured out what you could do to make us, you know, the school of choice um, for parents looking to, to send their kids here. So appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would echo that. It's not an easy, especially considering the current inflations. Um, how do we maintain that and provide quality services to our students? And uh, because I think we all, the Board of Trustees, we are, as well as all the uh, people around the campus, we all acknowledge the importance of housing to the community built. Mm -hmm. So it's essential. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, can I entertain a motion? So moved. Support. Vote call, please. Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston. Yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinvelt. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yep. Chair Chen Zhang, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And Next, uh, Trustee Turfey is going to present a presidential retention. Thank you, Chair Chang Zeng. Uh, the Presidential Compensation and Assessment Committee has been thoughtfully considering our strategic direction as a university in the coming years. As we look towards the years ahead, we are energized by this pivotal moment in our university's history. Our long-term ambitions are coming to fruition and we are building momentum even as we emerge from the pandemic, which perpetuated an already arduous landscape of declining demographics in our state and across our nation. And a shift in the value proposition of college brought about by the shift in burden of these educational costs from the public to the student. In the face of these challenges, we have not been stymied, but instead are gaining momentum. Our students are gaining 21st century skills through our new WMU essential <laughs> studies and are enjoying, and are enjoying um, holistic attention and guidance through the MERS Tate College. We've attracted top flight executives who will now take our intercollegiate athletics and our research and innovation mission to new levels of excellence and our new Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management, Dr. Charles Cotton, will now focus on the essential enrollment efforts. The historic empowering futures gifts has already begun to transform the universities and the students will begin to benefit in this fall semester. As you're all aware, the gift is an anchor for the university's comprehensive campaign and a working goal of 1.25 billion dollars, which is the first campaign in nearly two decades. Even the physical campus has been transformed with new facilities that great students as well as great faculty seek. The new Arcadia Flats apartments and the new Aviation Education Center will soon be along with our new student center and dining facility and a renovated Dunbar Hall will follow in 2023. New green buildings are complemented by removing those that are past their planned life, detracting from the beauty of our campus, and also had added to the carbon footprint. We believe the next three years are pivotal for Western Michigan University. We must make the most of this moment and are doing so, and in doing so will require the continued strong and steady leadership of President Montgomery. At the same time, we have our eyes wide open. As you're all fully aware, there's a war on talent for very capable and effective university presidents. We know that being a university president is a uniquely demanding job in the current landscape and that we must be intentional about retaining our top leader. Before I go on, on, the, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and our community, I just wanna thank President Montgomery for his ser servant leadership and uh, his guidance. Because we believe President Montgomery is uniquely positioned to lead Western Michigan into the future, especially over these next three years, we have recommended a deferred compensation plan of $10,000 a year for the next three years. Funds would be deposited in this deferred compensation 
uh, account on or before July 1st, 2022. President Montgomery would be vested at 10,000 each year thereafter if he is serving as president of Western Michigan University on July 1, 2023, July 1, 2024, and July 1, 2025. Vested funds for which he is eligible will be available to President Montgomery upon his separation from the university. And of course, any unused funds would be returned to the university. I wanna make it clear that this is not a performance bonus and does not otherwise change any of the other terms of his contract. It is an additional provision intended to retain our top leader at a crucial time in our history that has the potential to catapult Western into new levels of excellence and impact. I'll now read the resolution for board approval. It is recommended that the board establish a deferred compensation plan for President Montgomery and the amount of $10,000 per year for the next three years. These funds will serve as the president's annual raise at a rate of approximately 2% per year. Funds will be deposited in a deferred compensation account on or before July 1, 2022. The funds will vest at $10,000 on July 1, 2023, 2024, and 2025 for as long as President Montgomery is serving as our leader at Western Michigan University. Vested funds for which he becomes eligible will be available to President Montgomery at the time of his separation from the university. And as previously stated, any ineligible funds will be returned to the university. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Very expensive that are very expensive. Very expensive. Yep. So hearing that, hearing none, can I uh, entertain a motion? I so I support. I support. <laughs> As you can see, we've worked really hard on this. <laughs> Chair Chester. Yes. Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston. Yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinbelt. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang. Motion passes. Thank you. And thanks. To, we appreciate the committee's work on this. Um, and Coming next is uh, the Candle Center Battle Creek property sale brought by uh, Vice President. <laughs> and this is my last one. <laughs> so uh, March 17th, 2022 meeting, the Board of Trustees approved the sale and transfer of the Kendall Center to the city of Battle Creek. Uh, since then, uh, ongoing conversations have occurred in Battle Creek, and the city asked that the sale and transfer be done with Battle Creek Unlimited. This private entity is actually responsible for strategic investment within Battle Creek, as well as job creation. Uh, so it was a reasonable and rational request to have us consider Battle Creek Unlimited as the person acquiring the property. So with that, um, we were supportive of that ask. And so I have probably a longer recommended action than one I just described to get us there. Pursuant to the retained powers of the board regarding the transfer of real property, as recommended, the board approved the sale of the Kendall Center to Battle Creek Unlimited for $1 and authorizes the president, treasurer, or assistant treasurer, the authorized officers, to finalize and to negotiate and execute any deeds, easements, closing statements, agreements, or documents, and to take such other actions necessary or convenient to effectuate and complete the transactions contemplated herein with such modifications as they or any one of them may approve as reasonable or necessary. There are no other changes to the agreements that we're aware of other than the introduction of Battle Creek Unlimited versus the city of Battle Creek. Any questions? Hearing none, can I entertain a motion? So motion. Moved and supported. Okay. Uh, Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston. Yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. 
Trustee Reinveld. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang, motion passes. Thank you. Um, then next is the consent items. If anyone would want to remove uh, any of the consent item items for uh, future discussion, for further discussion. Hearing none, can I have a motion to pass the consent items? So moved. Support. Chair Chen Zhang. Yes. Vice Chair Edgerton. Yes. Trustee Johnston. Yes. Trustee Penn. Yes. Trustee Reinveld. Yes. Trustee Trevan. Yes. Trustee Turfey. Yes. Chair Chen Zhang, consent items pass. Thank you, Secretary Schumann. And are there any general public comments? There are not. Thank you. With that, we're going to have uh, two celebrations. Yeah. Anyone want some cakes downstairs? And then we have the tenure promotion celebration. We'd like to uh, invite people to attend to celebrate. And with that, meeting adjourned. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Sorry. So I have a motion to so support. support. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> meeting adjourned.